Hello and welcome to another lesson on the OSI model, Open Systems Interconnect. This is layer one, the physical layer. This is where we're talking about bit pushing, so pushing bits between devices. Remember the physical layer, you, have, you deal with bits. At layer two, you deal with frames and so on and so forth. We have a separate video where we cover the different layers and how to memorize them and a little mnemonic trick to memorize the difference between the TCP IP model and the OSI model and also the PDU units. Uh, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. So some terminology that you should just be aware of before we get started is that there is a difference between physical layer and physical controls. So make sure that you understand the difference between what the physical layer is, pushing bits between each other, and a physical control category. So a physical control category could be something like a, a fence versus uh, that would be a physical control versus if you were using something like unshielded twisted pair, which would be a control applied at layer one. I could see that being some kind of an exam question. So make sure you understand the difference between that and how the questions are worded. Terminology is, is very important in this exam. So make sure that you have a, a very firm understanding of terms that are similar to one another. So let's get into cabling real quick. The different types of cabling. The first one to mention is the unshielded twisted pair. And that's the most common type of network cable. This type of cable is subject to eavesdropping and interference and something called crosstalk. If you're not familiar with those, when you're talking about interference, that's from nearby devices. And crosstalk is when the cables themselves bleed over or there's, there's information crossing in the cables that are uh, the, the wires within that cable. Um, so if you have first-hand experience with this, obviously let me know in the comments. Um, this is one of the domains that I don't have a whole lot of experience in, so there was a huge learning curve for me. Uh, once again, this is subject to eavesdropping. So now we talk about shielded twisted pair, which that's the same thing as unshielded twisted pair. However, there's a, a metallic sheath or a protective outer shield applied to the cables. And with these, you're gonna have a lot less interference, but you're gonna have more crosstalk. <clears throat> Excuse me. And eavesdropping is still possible for uh, attackers who want to tap the wires. So the another, another type of cable that you want to be aware of is coax, and coaxial cable. That has a very thick protective outer shield and it has the thick wire in the middle. You use this for your cable TV or your cable internet. So there's no interference with this and it's more expensive and it's harder to bend. With fiber optics, you have the light signals within the cables. And with these, you have a lot less vulnerabilities. It's harder to tap, but you, you can still tap it. The wires are, the cables are expensive to implement, and they're a lot harder to implement as well. So with fiber optics, you want to be aware of the three different modes that they have. There's a single mode, multi-mode, and plastic optical fiber. So with, <clears throat> well, with plastic optical fiber, of course, the plastic core is going to be worse than the glass core and because it doesn't transmit as strong of a signal. And the main difference between these is that with the single mode, you have a small diameter, but it can travel further. With the multi-mode, you have a slightly bigger diameter, and it's going to travel a shorter distance. And then with plastic optical fiber, in addition to the plastic, you're going to have a much bigger diameter. And so that's going to affect the signal. It's going to be less. So it has an inverse relationship. So quickly, a little, a little bit on the topologies. I don't think they're going to test you on this. This is more network plus kind of stuff. But some terms that you should be aware of is ring. So there's a token ring topology, which is how the networks are, are set up, the, uh, the architecture. And then you also have this thing called a ring, which is going to be presented in the next domain, domain 5, which is actually an authentication device. So be sure that you understand the difference between those two. Another term that might pop up is you have the star topology, which is what most networks are. You have all the devices connected into the one router or switch. And then you have something called the star principle, which is which was covered or is going to be covered in domain three. So we're doing this a little bit out of order uh, just because of the timing of certain things right now. And uh, the star principle is basically the right principle. So we ha do have another video that covers the access control model. So if you haven't looked at that yet, be sure to watch that so you have a firm understanding of what the star principle is and how to memorize that. Some other key terms, it talks about collision. 
a couple of times. So collision in, in domain three is when you're talking about a hash. So when a, a collision in a hash is when you have the same output that's generated from different inputs. And then you have something called collision detection and collision avoidance. And those have to do with carrier sense multiple access or CSMA. Collision detection has to do with ethernet. And so ethernet with collision detection, it basically waits a specified amount of time or a random amount of time before it transmits again to get a, a clear transmission. And that's to avoid the, that's to uh, detect, you know, tries to detect the, co the collision before it happens. And then you have this collision avoidance, which is related to wireless technologies. And that basically asks the, uh, it asks whether it can send the signal before it transmits. And you have this thing called a request to send or RTS, and then you have something called a, a clear to send signal, a CTS, that are exchanged between devices before they actually transmit. So make sure you're, you're aware of these terms. Some additional terms that you need to be aware of are DSL, which stands for Digital Subscriber Line. Make sure that you're aware of the various different brands or different, different modes of DSL. I don't know that they're going to test you on that, but they may. There may be a question here and there. Uh, there's a lot on DSL out there. A uh, key term to be aware of is asymmetric DSL. So make sure you know a little bit about that. I started to do some slides on this, but they got a little bit busy. So I apologize. If you would like me to dive deeper into any of these, please let me know. You have the, the cable internet, which the key term that I think you need to be aware of here would be the there's a thing called a core and a head or a head. And that's basically the, cent the central device that you connect to, your modem connects to when it gets powered up. And what that does is that exchange a crypt exchanges a cryptographic key with the modem, and that's to prevent tapping and eavesdropping. I guess in the past you were able to you know, snoop on your neighbors if you're all using the same cable provider. BPL it stands for broadband over power line, and that's a technology that's emerging, and it has to do with sending internet signals over power lines. Power lines being installed everywhere. The next term you'd have down there at the bottom is the CDMA, which stands for uh, Code Division Multiple Access and the Global System uh, Global Systems for Mobile. So be aware of those. There's not a whole lot presented in the CBK on those, but uh, do be aware of those those terms. Um, if you want me to dive deeper into number four there, just let me know. I can do that. Other than that, if there are any questions, comments, or corrections, let me know in the comments. Other than that, uh, good luck on your studies and head on over to cissprep.net for some excellent and challenging, much more challenging exam questions, which we believe are going to be very similar to the type that you'll run into on the exam. So you want to be prepared for all different types of questions. You want to be prepared for the questions that are just straight out of the CBK. For example, what is a hash? And you want to be aware of some of the other more difficult questions, such as the term comparisons and the ones that actually do try to confuse you. So that's what we really focused on on our, on our site. So head on over there. It's $15 for six months. Thanks. Have a great day.